So let's look at the vision that Tim Berners-Lee espoused in way back in 2000 called the semantic web, which essentially puts together some of the ideas that we've been talking about in the past few minutes. So to answer a que question or query like, who is the leader of USA, a semantic web system or web intelligence system incorporating semantics would proceed something like as follows. We might imagine a site a.com which collects facts by processing lots of web data, as we shall see later in this week how that's done. So we get facts like Obama is president of USA, Vladimir Putin is president of Russia, Pranam Mukherjee is president of India, Manmohan Singh is prime minister of India, and many other facts about presidents, premiers, prime ministers, etc. Another site might be extracting information about who is the leader of which country, might figure out that Manmohan Singh is the leader of India, Zuma is the leader of South Africa, Putin is the leader of Russia, and so on. A third site now might combine facts from a.com and b.com and come to a conclusion using rule learning that with some degree of confidence if X is the president of C then X is the leader of C. The process by which a bunch of facts is generalized to a rule using techniques like rule mining that we've seen earlier is called inductive reasoning as opposed to deductive reasoning, which is normal logical inference. Inductive reasoning is almost always probabilistic to a certain extent using some of the techniques that we've already seen. Next, normal deductive reasoning allows us to combine the rules and facts to arrive at the fact that Obama is the leader of USA, which is then the answer to our query. Further, this new fact is then added back to the appropriate part of the semantic web dealing with facts of this nature. Now this vision was a powerful vision expressed more than a decade ago. It's not exactly been realized today, but much of the technology needed to express facts and rules in a form that can be shared across different systems using XML languages such as RDFS, RDF, which is called RDF schema, and OWL, or the web ontology language. That technology has been developed by the World Wide Web Foundation, where Tim Berners-Lee plays an important role. So the web of data and semantics is in principle possible. The question is who is populating this web? Web scale inference is in some sense also possible, not necessarily happening in exactly the same way as initially envisioned, but is happening with efforts such as Google Squared, if you just figure this out from the web, it's essentially Google's attempt to extract lots of different facts from the wide, uh, the World Wide Web. Wolfram Alpha is another recent search engine which relies on learning lots of facts about the world. And of course, there's Watson, which uh, we've come across earlier, the IBM program that won the Jeopardy challenge. These are efforts which don't necessarily use techniques like OWL and semantic web technologies, though they have a similar intent and spirit, which is essentially to learn facts from the web and be able to reason about those facts uh, in a web intelligence system, as opposed to merely searching for web pages. So to summarize, the semantic web vision is about a web of data and semantics which is shared so that one can have inference or reasoning at web scale, a bunch of technologies which is designed to enable this, 
RDF, or Resource Description Framework, as its uh, expansion is, the Web Ontology Language, and various variants of that, as we shall see very soon. These are all technologies designed to enable this sharing of data and semantics across the web. At the same time, their use to actually perform reasoning has not necessarily proceeded in exactly the same way as originally envisioned. Google Squared, Wolfram Alpha, Watson do in fact reason using facts learned from the web, but not necessarily using the same technology backbone. We shall return to the semantic web and some efforts which are in fact learning facts in RDF and OWL form a little later. For the moment, let's turn to resolution and logic and how such deductive reasoning might actually take place within a semantic web engine regardless of the exact technology it uses.